Hey, welcome to another episode of Camp and Camera. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. And if you've been here before, well, welcome the heck back. Hey, we have, it's been a little while since we've had a video out, several weeks actually, I'm sorry about that. But everybody needs a little break every now and then. We uh, eased back over the Christmas holidays. And then January, we took some snowy days and we just cleaned up the workshop. Now, it's not 100% clean. You know, my shop is 32 foot long. There's probably, I'm, and I'm looking behind the camera right now, there's probably 12 feet of it that I'm not going to show that I still need to clean. But I've been trying to organize a little bit, uh, you know, on this end of the shop. And, you know, where I can uh, get out here and, and make my projects go a little bit easier. So, today the project is going to be a utensil drawer. If you've seen the Camp Easy before, you know that in the galley, we got a couple drawers on the right side. Um, the one at the top is for the two burner cooktop, and the one at the bottom has been a, a drawer that we put utensils, um, skillets, pots, just anything to do with cooking in there. And while it has held everything, it's getting kind of crowded. And when it comes time to get something out, it's getting a little hard to do. We happen to notice, though, that there's a little bit of a space, maybe three or four inches, above the cooler on the left-hand side that would be perfect for a utensil drawer. So that's what we're going to launch in today, and hopefully it'll work out well, and Joanne will be a real happy camper. All right, let's get the disclaimers out of the way. I'm not showing you how to build a drawer in your camper or how to use your tools. I'm just showing you what I did with mine. Let's go. So this project is going to consist of six pieces. For the front of the drawer, I'm going to use a piece of 1 by 4 select pine that I picked up at Lowe's, and that should match the cabinetry that's already in the camper. The bottom of the drawer will be made from this quarter inch piece of Baltic birch. And this is a scrap piece. It's not uh, exactly 3 eighths of an inch, but it's close. It's just a scrap piece of wood I had laying in the shop from another project. But I noticed there's enough room to cut drawer sides out. So that's what I'm going to use for the drawer sides. I went ahead and 3D printed a green handle to match the others. And in this particular build, I'm going to be using, turn it around here where you can see it, a 14 inch ball bearing drawer slide. We'll get more into that later. So the first thing I need to do is determine uh, how big the drawer is going to be. Now I've got this space right here between the top of the cooler and the bottom of the, um, you know, this rail. I'm not going to completely fill it up because I just still need to be able to get the cooler out. Now it looks like in this case, I'm right at three and three quarter inches space. I'll probably leave at least a half inch above that cooler. Now I need to get the width right at 21 inches. As for depth, now this couldn't be easier. My galley countertop is the same depth all the way across. And since I already have a drawer, all I have to do is make this one the same depth because I know it works. In this case, from the back of the drawer to the back of the face plate is 14 and one quarter inches. Hey, just a real quick workshop tip for you all. If you've seen my videos before, you may have noticed that I use Porter Cable 20 volt cordless tools. Not because they're any better than anything else, it's just that I bought a 20 volt drill years ago by Porter Cable, and anytime I bought a new tool, I just went ahead and went with that same platform, that way my batteries would work. Um, well, recently, I decided I wanted to buy a Porter Cable cordless shop vac just so that I could go around the shop and clean up messes without having to plug in cords or run extension cords. The problem is, Porter Cable no longer makes one. 
And if you can find one, I mean, they're like terribly expensive. But I was at Lowe's the other day and Craftsman has just came out with a 20 volt cordless shop vac. Well, the problem is my batteries aren't gonna work with it. Well, after a bit of research, it turns out you can buy adapters that will put almost any battery on almost any tool as long as they're a very similar or the same voltage. In this case, I bought an adapter off of eBay. Uh, I think they also sell these on Amazon, but this plugs on the battery port of the tool. Put my Porter cable battery on the adapter. It looks pretty natural too. And now I can use Porter cable batteries on Craftsman tools. Now I'm gonna use this wood vise just to hold one of the side pieces in place. I'll put some glue on it. So with this piece already fastened to the bottom down there, I'm not going to have to put it back in the clamp. I'm just going to hold this one by hand. Now that I have all four sides of the drawer cut and put together, I need to put the bottom on it. Now the drawers that are already in the teardrop, I just cut out a rectangle and I glued and brad nailed it to the bottom of the frame and it worked just fine. I haven't had any problems. But this time I'm going to try something a little different. I think I'm going to take the inner dimensions of this frame, transfer them to this piece, cut it out and stick it down inside of it and see if it will square up all four sides for me. I think that'll work. Then again, I put down some tape because I'm cutting against the grain and I don't want the grain to fluff up. So when I put the tape down, I scratched it with my fingernail just to wet the tape out to make sure there's a good bond. Now it's time to cut the face board. I've already marked it. And it's kind of long, so once I get it positioned in the saw, I'm gonna clamp it down. Need to bring it back just a little bit. Okay, that's good. I'm just gonna clamp it down to help hold this big long board still. <laughs> Good grief, what a mess. Much better. Okay, so I would imagine wherever you get your drawer slides, uh, whoever the manufacturer is, there may be some difference in the installation instructions. So I'm not gonna cover that with you. Because if you do this yourself, you're gonna have your own installation instructions at your disposal. But what I will say, is that these installation instructions want me to put a mark on the cabinet to line the drawer slide up with. And I'm just going to put these quick grips up there right on the mark so I know if I slide the rail or the slide up to it, then it's aligned with the marks. Pretty sure I've showed you this in the past, but this little spring-loaded uh, drill hole starter, I don't know what, what you call this thing, if you don't have one, you got to get one. I can't even begin to tell you how much of a difference it makes for starting screws and starting drill bits in just the right spot. Now when I put that screw in there, it's already trying to go in the exact hole that I want it to.
So using the instructions that came with the drawer slides, I marked off the locations on the drawer uh, for the, the part that goes on the drawer, and I marked off the location on the walls here uh, for the part that goes on the walls. And again, that may be different depending on the drawer slide you get, so I didn't show you how I marked these out. Um, these are, by the way, are made by Liberty Hardware, and I've used them before, and I really like that company. So anyway, now that I've got the slides in place, let me put it in. Perfect. That's going to be so nice. Now, the reason I like to put the drawer front on last is that I want to be sure that I've got the exact same amount of space all the way around this thing. I took the tape measure and I measured the center of this faceplate. I set the handle over that center mark. There's the center mark. Here's the center of the handle. And then I put a pencil mark right in the middle uh, where one of these screw holes will be on the edge right here. Once I have that, since I already have the caliper set to the width of those holes, all I have to do is put that down and mark those locations. And now I know where my screw holes are. Okay, so the hole locations have been marked and I punched them. Now all I have to do is hold this up, get my gap the same all the way around and drill a hole all the way through here and all the way through here and the screws that hold the handle on will hold the whole thing together while I'm going and tacking it on the inside with a pneumatic stapler. like the dry fit works perfect. Wonderful. But let's put the cooler back in, make sure everything fits. Now, one concern I had was that when I opened the lid of the cooler, you know, how's it gonna interact with the handle and the edge of this? Am I gonna be able to open it far enough? And that's how far I can open it. That is absolutely fine. So, let's see if the cooler fits inside like it's supposed to. Yep. All right, Joanne's just right inside the kitchen on the other side of the door. Let's see if she likes this. Dude, it's cold out here. It is cold out here. Very cold out here. <gasps> it matches perfect. Yeah. It looks like it's always been there. I need to put <clears throat> the, uh, the spar urethane on it. I don't have it finished yet. Um, but heck, I think it turned out pretty good. Here's how big it'll be. <gasps> Plenty of room for your utensils, didn't it? Perfect. Great. Honey, all the utensils. Yes. Good. Abs oh, this is going to be so much better. <laughs> I'm glad. Oh my gosh. Now, when you open the cooler, um, you slide it to the front, it opens this much. But that's enough, right? Yeah. That's okay. Fine. That's what I thought. Good deal. Well, I think this one's a win. So there you have it. Joanne likes it. I think it's a win. 
Um, in all seriousness, though, this is going to be a game changer as far as getting our utensils out. Uh, before, we had them in the bottom drawer. The top drawer would be open with the stove running. We decided we need something out of the bottom drawer, and it was kind of hard to get things out. Too much stuff in there. This is going to make it so much easier. Anything you can do to make your camping experience easier is worth doing. The last thing that I need to do, um, probably tomorrow night, I'm not going to show you this, is I'm going to take the handle back off after the glue sets up, and I'm probably going to put a couple coats of a Minwax spar urethane on there. And that's what I did all the cabinetry with. Um, it, it's a little bit better than polyurethane in that it doesn't yellow over time. And I think it has a little bit of a flexibility to where maybe it'll resist cracking. Um, and it helps to, to kind of blend all the woods together. There's a little bit of a milky color to it. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and hey, before we get out of here, I want to say I was contacted just a short time ago by a young man named Richard Ferret. He's a journalism student and, and who had actually built his own teardrop camper. And he wanted to do a school project called the Teardrop Story, where he was going to do a, uh, make a video about the history of teardrop campers and revolution. So he contacted me, um, Frank Bear at Vintage Technologies, and he did a really good job putting this video together. I'm going to put a link in the description below. Go check that out. Uh, good young man, did, you know, did a real good job building the teardrop and did a good job on the video. So, hey, that's all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road.